Welcome everyone to our weekend wellness hour. I have a special guest here today with me, Suzanne Margolis Gray. And we are going to be covering a topic that doesn't get covered much in normal everyday conversations or even just in healthcare in general, our colon. I find it a fascinating topic. And one of the reasons why I find it fascinating is it really does affect how you feel. So Suzanne is a specialist in this. She has been practicing massage and colon hydrotherapy for over 30 years in the Tampa Bay area. And she is a member of the International Association of Colon Therapy. She served on the board for eight years and was even awarded the VIP award in 2011. She's been teaching colon therapy nationally and internationally for over 25 years. And even when she's working with someone, she includes other techniques like energy work, massage therapy, essential oils, breathing techniques, light therapy, color therapy, and more. So she has a huge wide variety of background and we're going to tap into her knowledge today and talk to her about the colon and why we should take care of it and what should we do. So I want to give you guys Suzanne here. Thank you so much, Suzanne, for joining us. Welcome. Uh well, thank you, Amy, for having me. This is one of my favorite topics, poop, and I'm a person obsessed over poop. If you figured that out, it's P-O-O-P. And believe me, I never thought that I would get into this profession. I have a background in education, a master's degree. I've taught Montessori through traditional public school and, um, and then teaching colon hydrotherapy. So um, I just, I get excited about it because I've worked with people from four to 96. I've had the great honor and blessing to work in a traditional GI's office and also holistic doctors and have had my own centers. So it's been very fascinating and I've really learned a lot from all those people, the traditional and the holistic doctors, most of all, my clients. Yeah, and I, I know developing that relationship with your clients is one of the most important aspects of, of any type of healthcare practice. It's often not put at the top, but when you get to know the person you're working with personally, they divulge so much more, which helps you help them even more. Well, in their own way, believe me, they share a lot with me. Yeah. Um, you know, we live in a house, where we eat, sleep, drink, and we're not there 24 seven, but the most important house we live in is our body. And just like at the house that we live in where we eat and sleep, the plumbing's important. It's even more important when you have the plumbing in your house. And I'd like to explain that. And I'll show you over here. I hope we can see that. This here is a colon. Now your colon is as long as you are tall. I have found that when I worked in a GI's office and was able to go in during the colonoscopies, people with long limbs have extra long colons. In fact, I had a gentleman that came to me, he was 80 years old, he was 6'2". He had an extra five feet of colon. And he came to me and he asked me, please, I don't want to have a surgery. And I, and I said to him, I said, look, I." I don't know if this can work, but let's try it. And after a year, I told him, I said, Bill, you really need to get, you know, a resectioning. And he did. And the great thing was he cut back and started visiting me, no matter if he came for a colonic or not. Such a sweet man. But you can see over here, this is what the medical community thinks your colon is shaped like. Over here is what most people have. Why? because the colon is a four layer muscle. It expands and it contracts. And it kills in all different areas, like down at this point here, these are anuses, that is the output of where the colon is. And if you can see right here, can you see it all right? We can see just fine, I love it. Here is your small intestine, which is 23 feet. And then you have the ileocecal valve, which is the um, junction where it goes in to the cecum, to the hepatic flexure, to the transverse, splenic flexure, descending, sigmoid, and then sigmoid rectal, and then out. However, now you think about this. If you're eating three meals a day and you only poop one a day, 
Where are those meals? Well, they like to store in here. And you know who likes to live with that stuff? Parasites, bugs, because you're not eating right. And so they're sitting there living in you, and they're not even paying rent. I mean, now come on. We got to get this stuff out of you. Now, so anyhow, um, this is just really important. This area, the transverse, right here. Look at all the different transverse here. And how does that happen? It can happen through injury. Those of us that have had children, um, surgeries, all that can affect the colon. Wow. So obviously you know a lot about it. How did you start your journey into it? It's not, I don't know if you came out of the womb and were like, I want to study the colon, but <laughs> you're like, I enjoyed that. Well, okay. Um, but I mean, I, how'd you go? <laughs> Maybe I have to blame it on my twin brother. You know, um, because he let me out first. He kicked me out. So maybe he kicked me in the abdomen. I don't know. Just kidding. Um, so um, I suffered from constipation because when I look at a body, I look at the Chinese five element. I look at the doshas from Ayurvedic and I look at the areas that a person's body is. And I'm very bada and the colon is one of the um, areas that needs a little support. So I've had constipation problems, but I didn't know it wasn't normal. One day I picked up a book by Bernard Jensen, mm -hmm. Tissue Cleansing Through Bowel Management, and I thought, that man is talking about me. Wow. So I started looking for co um, colon therapists, and actually, as I started getting the colon therapy, I um, was kind of interviewing because I wanted to learn this. And in Florida, we must be a massage therapist, to be a colon therapist. Okay. And I came upon Brenda Watson, who was my mentor, also the former founder of Renew Life Products and now a Vital Planet. And we've been soul sisters for 30, excuse me, 30 years. And she was my mentor. And I learned a lot from her. And um, I started to do more in the clinic and she was in the supplement area. And I just continued learning and it's been such an experience for myself because when I started doing this in my late 30s, early 40s, I realized that I was detoxing. Well, yeah. the issues are hidden in the tissues. I was doing a detox. I don't know if it was the master cleanse or one of them. And I couldn't get out of bed. Literally, my late husband had to pick me up and take me to the colon therapist. Got on the table, had my colonic, I jumped off the table and walked out of there. And I was like, what is going on? Well, I had an emergency epidectomy. And I think it was like 10 years old. Oh my, wow. You know, and um, I'm lucky that I made it out. So that came up. See, when you start detoxing, those memories start releasing. So when I do colon therapy with people and I do my energy work, I can feel things. And when I talk with them and share with them as they share with me, and I reflective, I do reflective listening and they say something and they do something. And when the truth hits them, bam, 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 they release. It's fascinating. Yeah. That's great. So now can you take us through the process for those who've never had it? I have never had one. I don't okay. know if that's too much information, but I've never had one, but I've heard about it more recently, just as I've dived into health and wellness more and just looking at how are all the multiple ways that we can take care of our body. This has come up from people who have really enjoyed it. So I'm curious what, what goes on. Okay. Well, a lot of people will ask me about an enema. Okay. okay. The enema will only do the first small part of the colon, the anus and maybe the sigmoid rectal. Okay. So when you come in, I go through a history form. I ask a lot of questions. And then they'll put a gown on with the sh um, and the opening the back. And they have a gown and a sheet over them at all times so their trust and safety issues are addressed. Now, there's two types of equipment, an open system and a closed system. It depends on the person, which what they prefer. I've had both of them in my centers. And I prefer the closed system because I'm all about relationships. And I'm in the room with them and I do various types of body work, as you know. And then we use something called a disposable packet. I'm gonna take this out and show people. And 
In the disposable packet, we have lube, or I use coconut oil to okay. insert the speculum, which I'll show you. This is the water line, and then this is the waistline. Okay. Then we have something called a speculum. And the speculum, it's all disposable. The speculum is like this. Now, I know some of you are out there and saying, oh my God, that's so big. Well, guess yep. what? Let me share something with you. If you took a scissors and you cut your head off here and at your waist, you will find that here, right here would be the anus. That's the foramen manner where the spine comes through. And then you've got the temporal bones, which are the hip bones. It's an exact replica of the base of the cranial. Mm -hmm. So for those of you out there, your mouth can open up as wide as your anus. If some of you have babysat or you um, look at kids' poops, they're huge. Why? They don't have the emotional baggage that we get as we continue to get mature in age. So here is the speculum, and it's this rotator you can see is rounded, and we use lubricant. Just as a joke, we don't use spit, it's not sanitary. Okay. <laughs> you would know that know me out there, I have this warped sense of humor, but you look at poop all day, you see what happens. So this goes in like this, okay. all right? The obturator will come out. Now already, I'll have the water line hooked up. Got it. And, so, and then I have the waistline hooked up. So it's like, it's like this. Now I can walk around, you want me to show Equipment. I mean, sure. Um, I, don't Why wanna, not? I don't want to get all right, people. You might get a little dizzy here. I'm just setting up because I'm going to be doing this um, in my home. So I'm going to take you for a little ride here as we walk around. Now, this is a piece of equipment that I use. Can you see it okay, Amy? Yeah, actually, right. we can. Okay. So I've got a temperature gauge and a pressure okay. gauge, and we use sanitation. We have an I'll point down a little bit. Point okay. down there. There we go. Right. That's it ultraviolet light, we have three filters, um, and then I have a control valve here. Okay. This strip here holds the speculum in because you're going to lay on it. Got okay? it. And so we have a filter system. I'm coming down here because I want you to see. We have a filter system okay. down here as well. Yeah. Okay? So we're very careful to make sure that the water is clean, everything is sanitized. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this like for 30 years, right? And yeah. I'm still alive and breathing. Yes, you are. <laughs> so you don't have, because you have a package, so it's a new speculum for each person, I assume. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. And it looks very sanitary. Very sanitary. I wear the gloves. Um, after each person, I use hospital grade disinfectant and okay. um, I use essential oils as well. Yeah. And um, everything is really, really clean. Absolutely because I'm gonna treat people on my table the way I wanna be treated. Yeah, absolutely. Now, there are people out there who have like kinked or twisted colons. Do you, what do you do? Does this work? Do you kind of have to work with them and massage or how does that get addressed? Yes, um, I actually had somebody that came to me that had a kinked colon. Yeah. And it, it can be very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, I'm taken a work by Dr. Daryl Wolf called Wolf Deep Tissue. And so sometimes there might be scar tissue around there or just something twisted where you have to work that area to see if it can get untwisted. Right. I also have a person, a um, couple people on staff that are body workers that are doing very advanced work that do the advanced work as well and can get that going. I also teach people too, different things that they can do. Um, massagers, getting a slant board so that you would be able to kind of move things around because I have a few nurses that come to me and some of them are like, you know, in deliveries when they do C-sections and the stories that I've heard, you know, they open you up, they take the guts out and they put them back in. They just put them back in. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I haven't had a C-section. I've got two kids, but, um, you know, anything's possible. And see, that's where I come from. Mm -hmm. um, unlimited possibilities. And I think that it's possible if you think it, where the mind goes, the body's going to follow. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So what position is a person in when you're working with them? Okay. So uh, my table 
is flat, but I have a head part that goes up and down. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll work with them on their left side. I'll mm -hmm. work with them on their back. Now, okay. there are times, and they, like I said, they have a gown and a sheet over them. They're always covered. There are times when I have their legs bent. There are times when I had somebody cross their leg over their other leg. Um, I do different things. I've actually had somebody, a gentleman one time came in, and because you turn on your left side, he had cancer on oh. his shoulder. So I had to rearrange the room to get everything ready because I couldn't do that insertion. I could have tried it on the back, but he was a very large man and yeah. I wanted him to feel comfortable and safe. Yeah. So, you know, so yeah, I do that. Um, there was a workshop I went to where somebody actually did it on their stomach. Um, but I think that puts people in a vulnerable position. I don't think I would want to be in that position. Yeah. So if, and if something like that would have to happen, I always ask permission. Like I ask permission, may I put essential oils on you? Right. Right. Yeah. You, you just never know what someone's background and history might lead to. Oh, exactly. So can you go into what's the difference between the closed and open system? So sure. what, what are the technical dif differences or what do you well, mean by that? You know, um, in a closed system, like I said, everything's enclosed here. Okay. You have a speculum, like I showed everybody, this is a mm -hmm. speculum yeah. where, um, and the therapist is in the room. Okay. Um, in an open system, you're laying on a bed, kind of, kind of like a bed. And instead of having a speculum, they have something, and I don't have one here with me, mm -hmm. a rectal nozzle that's shaped like a pencil and curved up. So where the therapist with the closed system can regulate the water, if water goes in, we can turn it off, let it soak, and let it come out. Where in an open system, um, water is always going in and you're pushing out. So what I tell people is this. In a closed system, you're taking your colon to the gymnasium. Why? It's a muscle. So we put water in, and I have a pressure gauge. I know exactly where to stop. Okay. And then I'll, I'll let the water out. So we're, we're, can, we're expanding the muscle, take the water out, it goes in. You don't have to push or anything like that. There's no other forces. Okay. In an open system, water's constantly going in and then people push and then it, the feces and whatever drops down into an area and is vacuumed out. There are pros and cons to both systems. Mm -hmm. What's most important where is the person going to feel comfortable? I can do both, and I can see situations where an open system would be good. But again, my preference, because it's about relationships, and there is a synergy between the client, the therapist, and the equipment. I've worked on so many different pieces of equipment. They have their own personality. <laughs> <laughs> they do. And sometimes they do their own mind and just kind of malfunction or whatever so right yeah. so for me is one better than the other it's up to the individual yeah i would say when a person calls find out what system they use what's their experience are they certified by iaf the international association of colon therapy mm -hmm. and ask questions yeah yeah so this may be tmi for people but what do you see come out of col a colonic, like besides feces, or do you see other things? Do you see undigested food? Like <laughs> what? All right. I'm curious. I have, yeah. I have seen gum. I have seen strawberry, carrot, peaches, tomato, medicine, supplements. Oh my. Mucus. Um, I have seen tapeworms come out. You know, you really don't see always a lot of parasites because they're mainly microscopic. And um, sometimes a different color water is really okay. important. Even the color of the feces is important. It gives you information. Mm -hmm. I had a person one time, and it was kind of like greasy and kind of oranges, like. And when I was doing my research and talked to some other therapists, it had to do with the pancreas, pancreatitis, possibly. I cannot diagnose, and people will ask me things. I said, well, I've had this experience, or this person has had that. I think the most surprising thing I saw was a peel of an onion this big. And I thought, don't you chew your food? <laughs> that, that was my next question. When you see that, do you ask them about their chewing habits? And do oh my you gosh. This is what I, them? Oh, yes. I ask about how much water they drink, 
what kind of water they drink, how often do they drink, when do they drink, what do you eat, organic, non-organic, what does your lifestyle diet consist of, do you do intermittent fasting, do you do dairy, gluten, sugar, processed foods, what people don't realize, gluten affects the way that the body breaks food down. And some people have a lot of sensitivities. So the main thing when people come in, I always ask dairy and gluten. Okay. And believe it or not, sugar. And our fruits have sugar too. It's a different spin, but it's sugar. Yeah. yeah. So now based on what you see and all of your experience, do you have recommendations that you give to people? Say, let's say, okay, I went and had one. I had, everything was kind of just all messed up. And you were just going to give me, okay, ideally, and in the ideal world, if I could follow all the instructions that help benefit my colon, what would you say in terms of diet, chewing, water, what type of water? Like, what would you recommend to people? You know, there's so many different types of water. One thing I will say, a lot of people buy the pH water. Well, it's been sitting in the stores for how long? Yeah. A long time. I recently purchased a unit where I get pH water and hydrogen water. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the best units I've ever had. And I bottle it up if clients want it. I tell them to bring certain containers in and I'll get it for them. And eventually they might get that system. And I don't want to name any systems on something like that. If people want information, they can contact me. Um, so first thing in the morning, drink warm water with lemon or lime. Wake up the body. Here I am. Some people do intermittent fasting. Some people can handle it. It's not so much, you know, what I think the lifestyle should be. What fits into their lifestyle? Because it might stress them out. Yeah. We don't right. want them to be stressed out. No. So um, I think it's really important to do organic as much as possible. If you cannot do organic, bless your food and may your body use it for its highest good. Okay. Um, then I would say, you know, everybody says, well, what about raw? Well, I did raw 25 years ago before it was popular. And the thing is, if you have a compromised immune system or digestive system, you need slightly steamed vegetables because it's difficult to break down. Yeah. But then again, are you chewing? The goal is to chew 30 times. Okay. I know that's a lot. Start with 15. When I would, when I'd go out to eat, I'd watch people. The average person chews three to six times. Wow. Yeah. And then they gulp it down with water. You know, sip. Don't yeah. gulp it down because you're going to dilute the digestive enzymes. That's, oh, that's a good point. Reduce that. We, re we do produce um, amylase in the mouth for carbohydrates. So, you know, it's not so much, you know, says you are what you eat. Well, I'd like to take it a step further. You are what your body assimilates. Yeah. And what it doesn't, I see it in my YouTube. <laughs> and you just think they could be eating healthy with all these fruits and vegetables, but if it just comes back out in a solid form that you can actually recognize that vegetable, like you said, carrots and strawberries, Broccoli. obviously they're, they're not getting <laughs> what they're, they're designed to get and can affect them. Well, the other thing too, cellulose is very hard to break down. That's why we need to chew it. Oh, yeah. And everybody is in such a hurry. It's not like grabbing a piece of food and running off. You know, yeah. where can we allow ourselves to sit? And I'm guilty of this sometimes, um, where we can just sit and be at peace and just have gratitude for what we've got. So we put ourselves in the parasympathetic mode, not the sympathetic mode. Yeah, yeah. And that's often how we eat. I've been guilty of it where I'm like, okay, I have 15 minutes to eat lunch, you know, yeah. before I get on to my next call and just how much can I shove down and then I'll just digest the rest of the afternoon. So. Well, it, you know, yeah. And it's different. Like, um, I just like to share. I had this past week, I had two teenagers come in, very similar situations and they, they were in so much pain and the doctor said that they were okay, that they were normal. They've, they've had all this work done. They came in, they had a colonic. I've been in contact with them. I told them they need to come back in again. And, and sometimes the feces will be larger than this. Oh gosh. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking sometimes like that. Well, if you take a look at the chart that I showed you in the back, 
there's parts of the colon that are like this because the species is sitting in there. And everybody says, oh, well, it's, it's attached to the um, lining of the colon. It's not attached. It is so slippery in there. I've seen it during colonoscopies. What happens is that the colon could be like this, and then all of a sudden there's a weakness, and there has to be, it, it sits in there, and then another piece adds, and then another piece adds. And what happens? And I had a, these two girls, they both wound up in the restroom. They were in there for 15 minutes. Ooh. Yeah, they released and released. I had another young lady who's got environmental sensitivities. She called me up and she said, Suzanne, I don't know if I should come in. I've had diarrhea all day. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I really think you should come in because I know her history. Yeah. She came in and what came out of her, she says, where did it all come from? I said, honey, you had a blockage. Just because you have diarrhea does not mean that you're clear. And then what does your colon look like? Yeah. You know, there's, there's a technique or a, another therapy called iridology. If you find someone that does iridology, the study of the eyes, they can tell you the shape of your colon. And this is in the holistic view. Traditional medicine doesn't agree right. with me. Right. And, and we do need the traditional doctors. Don't get me wrong. And we need the holistic. We just need to bring, bring them together. Yeah. You know? Wow. So um, one thing that I do want to show that I think is really important that yeah. might help people understand why constipation or you're not going to the restroom, I'm going to show this picture here. And this is, can you see it all right? Yes. Ooh, that's good. Right there. Okay. So in there, you see the digestive system and it's got the veins. This is underneath the mesentery that lays on the colon and it attaches to the colon. I don't know if I'm pointing in the right place. Uh, but yeah. have, okay. This right down here. Yeah. So the digestive system has its own circulatory system. So what it does is that you have the hemorrhoidal vein going to the portal vein that leads up to the liver. Our liver is our main detoxification organ. It has over 500 functions. It goes through the two parts of it and then goes to the heart and then goes into the system. So the thing is, if this is dirty, what's going into your body? Yeah, not good. Well, it, it's not. And the thing is, is that we can do something about it. We have to take the time. And like, you know, I'm human too, like everybody else, you know? And just sit back and say, okay, well, that was the best decision I made at the time. What will I do next? We'll wait and see. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but it's important to see that. Go ahead. Yeah, so, so this can help with constipation, right? And then what else, or what else do you recommend to people who have constipation? What do you say to them? Okay, well, there's a lot of things. Um, number one, I invite them to take a look at what they're holding on to. Because we have three brains in our body. We've got the brain here. We've got our second brain here. Dr. Michael Gertrude wrote the book, The Second Brain. The third brain is the heart. We have 40,000 sensory neurons. So the, the thing is, is that we think and we act and we feel. And, and our gut is used to that. So I always ask, you know, what's your stress level? Let's try and calm that down. Okay. Yeah. Um, so drinking water, fiber, probiotics, mm -hmm. exercise, yeah. even if it's walking or get a little rebounder, it's like a little trampoline and bounce on it. Just, you don't have to go like this, but just bounce slightly because you want to oxygenate its movement. One of the funny things, like all my clients that tell me that, oh, I see Lizanne, I always think about you when I'm in the bathroom. Isn't that great to be remembered by? You know, and I have them do the colon dance, which I'll show you. I don't know if you can see me. So I have yeah. them go like this. And I have them do that because what it does is that it turns things around and you do pick up the heart rate a little bit. And there's different things that I tell them about the slam board and how to grab near their floating rib and the top of their hips and kind of bring their hands inward to help lift. Um, so I would say those main things, but we have to really go inside and reflect on who we are. What are we running away from? What are we holding on to? What do we want to look at? Or are we so emotional? Yeah. You know, there's so many things that are involved. And um, I know it may sound a little complex, but you know, it's teamwork. That's how I feel. When clients come into me, it's teamwork. Yeah. You know, so I'm curious because 
I know I deal with a lot of people with fight or flight issues or then that sympathetic tone, even people who think their mind is at peace, it stays in their body. And so there's that disconnect. And I imagine it's the same thing here, what you're talking about. We need to do the other work too, to find out what we're hol holding on to, because if we can get into relaxation, you can feel it relax into your chest, which drops your ribs down, which helps you not suck up your gut, which impacts your bowels. So there's the whole component to it. So it's great that you talk to people about this because they don't realize how much those stressors in their life really impact all of their body systems. I deal with, you know, pain and anxiety and stress, but you even see it in the colon and that's, that's huge. Well, it is huge. And, you know, I had a phone call last night from one of my dear friends. She said, please talk to this friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, she was around my age, um, her 60s, and um, she was, she has IBS and she hadn't gone for two weeks, you know, and so she called me and I talked to her and I said, well, you know, you're doing everything to be constipated. You eat wheat, you eat dairy, you're stressed out, you don't drink water, you don't exercise. Mm -hmm. And being a chronologically mature citizen, you know, that remember, that's a muscle. If it's been stretched out a little bit, can we bring it back? I don't know. Miracles right. can happen. Right. Things can happen. And the foods that you eat. Electrolytes are important, too. Yeah. There's so many things. That go into it. So do you have, do you see similar kind of results based on certain populations? Like, I know a lot of runners. I did a lot of ultra marathon runnings, you know, 30 to 100 miles. Do you see certain things with athletes versus people who are more sedentary versus people who are more type A high achieving people? Is it all across the board depends on the person or do you see some commonalities? Well, I see like type A's that hold themselves really tight. Yeah. lean towards constipation, that perfectionism. Yeah. Um, weightlifters, heavy mm -hmm. meat eaters, you know, um, lifting weights is fine, but let's get some movement more than just lifting weights. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's different with, a, with, with people. I see, um, I don't like to put people in a box. Right, right. You know, yeah, so let me sense. come in, I'll ask some questions uh, uh, and about that and ask about the family just a little bit. I mean, the body type. I mean, my twin brother and my sister, they're built differently than I am. They're kind of short and a little stockier and I'm the tall, thin one, but I'm the one that had the constipation problems, you know? So um, there's, there's a lot. It's also family dynamics that can go on. You know, I know what my triggers are. And I know that my colon, okay, maybe too much information, but I know, you know, my second child is almost 10 pounds, you know, and um, I know it did like a little number. I'm not blaming him, um, but I know that my colon is kind of a little distorted and it is a little extra long. So yeah. I play with things a little bit and say, okay, this might work for me. And people can take like, um, there's a product out there called Calm. You can get it at the health food store at Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, this magnesium um, citrate and there's a magnesium oxide. Both of them pull water from different areas. People ask me, well, what about flaxseed or chia seed? They're fine to do, but you've got to drink lots of water. Minimum half your body weight in ounces. So if you weigh 20, 120 pounds, it's 60 ounces of water. And people like cold water. Your body goes like this when you drink cold water. Room temperature is the best. Now I'm not saying you have to do it all the time. But, but it's helpful. Yeah. Interesting. So, so basically you treat all different people. Like there's not, is there anyone that you would say, no, I don't want to treat, or do you treat like <laughs> the range of people <laughs> besides well, personality wise, but um, <laughs> there are contraindications. Okay. You know? So um, you have to be colon cancer type of thing. Okay. If they have ulcerated colitis, which is bleeding, yeah. that might be going on. Mm -hmm. um, but actually I had a doctor refer somebody to me. They were getting, they wanted me to do a colonic on them, prepping them for a colonoscopy because she had cancer of the colon up in the hepatic flexure, which would be the right side. And okay. she, when she called and told me, I said, I would not do it unless she gave me a script from the doctor. Yeah. Because I don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, uncontrolled high blood pressure. I had a lady come to me 
And even though they fill out forms, I go through each question. Yes. And this lady drove 45 minutes to see me. And when she told me she took herself off her high blood pressure medicine, mm -hmm. I won't work on it. Mm. Yeah. I'm not gonna, I said, your safety is more important than anything. Yeah. You know, so that I've worked on quadriplegics, paraplegics. Um, I've worked on professional baseball, hockey, football players. So you men out there, colonics is not just for women. Um, mm -hmm. I think one of my most fun one was a little boy that was four years old. Oh my, so even that young. Yes, and you know, his mom talked about it, and I said, um, you know, I said I invited her to come in and get a colonic, and he could come in the room so he could see, because it's important for a child that their space is not violated. And so when I talked to her, she says, "Well, our nanny knows you. She comes to you." So she talked to the little boy, and he comes walking in with Mr. Broccoli in his hand, and he says, "Okay, Miss Suzanne, I'm ready." And I said, boy, I wish my nun would be like that. <laughs> and he had one colonic and he's doing fine. The other thing too, um, if I'm not feeling good or if you feel like flu-like symptoms coming on, get a colonic. It gets the stuff out of you. you know? Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, remember, it's, this is a septic tank of your body. Yeah. So how often is recommended that you get a colonic? Okay, so again, it depends on the individual. Okay. Um, I like to have a person come in for the first time, do three colonics. Now, depending, do they go every day? How many times a day? Or I should say a week. Somebody that's really constipated, I'd like to do one and then maybe get the other two a little bit further apart with like between seven and 10 days. Um, okay. Somebody that goes all the time, still get those three. I've had people that have been coming to me for 30 years. And they come in like every season. Okay. I, I had a young lady that came in um, and she had a very treacherous or redundant colon, very, very busy. I started out with her. I worked with her for four to five months. She was getting a colonic three times a week for about a month and a half. And then we went to two times a week, eventually one time. And then we started spacing it up. She was able to regain her natural peristalsis which is the movement of the colon. So right. see, things can happen. It's just, what, what are you willing to do? Yeah. Food sensitivities and allergies will affect the colon. Interesting. Yeah. So can you do it too much? You can do it too much. There was a, um, I had, you know, I've been teaching this for like 27, 30 years. Um, and I had a student once that was a nurse. And um, I found out that she was giving herself a colonic every day for 40 days. She wound up in the hospital. You're going to upset the electrolytes, the balance of everything. That is way too much. If I feel a person, if they make an appointment and if I feel like you really don't need this, I won't charge them for the appointment. You don't need to come in. Again, it's going to depend on the individual. Myself, I do a colonic once a month. I will have to say that one time, um, you know, kids are wonderful. Teenage years, they're very trying for the parent. And um, I was very stressed out. One of my kids was putting me through a big time, okay? Okay. And I didn't have the consciousness that I have now. And my colon literally stopped working. Yeah, and I was so blessed that I was a colon therapist because I had to give myself a colonic once a week. Wow, and so you actually do these on your own to yourself now? Absolutely, and I'll tell you, when I give myself a colonic, I set it up. I move my table over. I, I, in fact, I gave myself a colonic today, and I was watching a series that someone recommended, and I'm sitting there watching it, and I'm watching one tube and watching the other tube. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I give myself my own colonics. Um, I'm an early riser, and I like to get things going. And, yeah. That's a pun there. Um, so yeah, I, I work on myself. And when I teach, every student that leaves my premises learns to work on themselves. Nice. Do you have recommendations? So after you have a colonic, are there any restrictions in your activities after that for any period of time? Um, you know, I haven't had too many people have a problem. Okay. Um, if, if they're really toxic, 
I usually tell them, look, you know, you've been constipated. We're stirring things up. You might be tired. I had a person that hadn't had a colonic before, maybe went to the bathroom three times a week. She went home and she slept for 12 hours. Oh my, wow. Toxins are released. Now what will happen sometimes, um, you'll go home, everything's fine, and then you'll have a movement, but it's kind of watery. And um, so, and then they'll have a formed one, and that's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So I just tell people, some people get energy. I mean, I've been doing it, you know, for 30 years. I mean, I get done doing a clinic. I'm just like, I'm high energy anyhow. I'm just like speeding all over the place. Yeah. Um, because you feel lighter. I've actually had people that were on a regimen for about six months, and they had to get their glasses changed. There's a strong relationship with the liver and the colon. And one thing that I wanted to show people, mm -hmm. this is the stool chart. Who pulled it up a little higher. Okay. So I invite people, look at your poop, get to know what it is. Mm -hmm. If they're rabbit turds, I call them rabbit turds. Uh -huh. and, um, you're not getting enough water, you're dehydrated. Number four is the idea. Those are Lincoln logs, I call okay. them. And then down below here, they're like mushy. Now, yeah. why are they mushy? It doesn't necessarily mean it could be a, there's a blockage. I don't know. There's various reasons. If you're lactose intolerant, you may wind up having a stool that's very loose. Be aware of what you're eating and what comes out of you. Yeah. 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 It, it makes sense. It really does. Now, I remember we were having a conversation before this, and you were talking about a gentleman with high PSA levels. Oh, yes. Can you touch about that? Because I know we do have some men in the audience, and I think it would be good information. Well, also for women, too. With yeah. Women. Yeah. So um, back to my little chart here. I don't have all the organs here, but everything lies right here. And the prostate is right over here. Mm -hmm. Most likely... There's stuff right in here. I did a gentleman with a high PSA, changed his diet, came in for the colon therapy, went back in, PSA was normal. He wow. comes in regularly now, and he's fine. Because see, where this is, and we're upright, this can get enlarged. And there's a ligament when we have to go that straightens out the sigmoid area to allow it to go. So this lies also for women. When uh, I my 40s, you know, maybe too much information, but you know, let's be real about this. I mean, a regular pap smear. And the doctor wanted me to have a hysterectomy. And I said, no way. I cleaned up my diet, started doing it. I had the colon therapy that I was doing and learning more and more about it. Everything's intact, okay? Only thing I had out was my appendix and my tonsils. Everything else is there. And so this is really good for people just to be clean. Um, my sister, um, my late husband was a body worker and she came to visit and she was kind of toxic. So I gave her some stuff to start on before she came. And my uh, late husband was a, a body worker and did osteopathic techniques and things weren't moving and we got her cleaned out. Three months afterwards, she found out she was pregnant at 51. Oh, wow. Yeah. So if you're toxic and you may be having problems getting pregnant, that's a possibility. I mean, yeah. it's just a possibility. Yeah. And because there's so many factors that are involved. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I've had several people that have come in with, um, you know, they may have like first stage cancer or something like that. Again, um, depending where it's at. Ovarian. Yeah, we do that. And then I, um, teach them how to do coffee infusions. And um, that should not be done unless you have a script with a doctor because the coffee will purge the liver. Um, me, I could do all kinds of things. I've had chlorophyll. I've done coffee before um, because it's, it's very healing and alkaline. And that's what we want our body to be is to be yeah. more alkaline, but not very, very alkaline. That's just as dangerous as not. Yeah. So. Yeah, and one thing I'd like to touch on, Amy, and that is like people drink the pH water all the time. Mm -hmm. you want your stomach to be more acid. And if you keep doing that, the stomach is not going to be able to kill those little bugs or those little things going on. Got it. Yeah. So and, there's a lot that goes into it. Oh, there, there is. And then the other little organ, excuse me, I'm about to drink my water. Um, Good. 
the appendix. Mm -hmm. and, um, the appendix does produce um, probiotics, but it also squirts out a germicide fluid for um, parasites. Lee Dubell, I don't even know if she's even alive anymore. This was back when I, was, I studied with Brenda, and she did a whole series on that and told the story of a young boy that started having pain, and it was appendicitis, and the mother gave him um, long tube enemas, and he was mm. finding a piece of feces that was stuck in the appendix. Yeah, I remember a long time ago, 20 some years ago, they used to just pull appendix out right and left and just like, oh, it's not, you know, it's, n I remember hearing that it's not an organ that you need. And that always baffled me. I'm like, wait, we have an organ that we really would need. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. And so it's good to hear. Well, now I know they're shifting to trying not to take it out if possible, but it's good to know that we should also look at the colon as a possible contribution to issues with the appendix. Well, right. absolutely. And then the other thing too is scar tissue. Yeah. You know, scar tissue comes from C-sections. It comes from injuries, any kind of inflammation. Yeah. And I have a lot of women that have had C-sections and inflammation, the body says, oh my gosh, we have to go heal that. So white blood cells are healing it. But if you keep eating the same way, don't do anything about it, it's going to crystallize, calcify, and the flexibility that used to be like this is gonna go like this. And this is where the wolf deep tissue work comes in and breaks that up. Got it, so whole treatment. Yeah. So now are all colon therapists the same? Or how does that work? You know, not all colons are the same. Not all colon hydrotherapists are the same. Mm -hmm. Just like people, you know, my gift is, um, I've worked a lot on myself. Yes. Since I was 24. For 44 years, I have really worked hard on myself. And I've become very sensitive. And I'm very spiritual. And I always ask my clients what their belief system is so I can talk with them. And we all have gifts. It's whether or not we want to enhance them. I've chosen to. I didn't before. When I first started massage school and I laid my hands on somebody and I saw something and heard something, it scared the crap out of me. Now, my late husband, who was a Buddhist, worked with energy and explained things to me. And eventually, I started owning the gifts that God gave me. And I use that a lot as I evolve in who I am and love myself more. I'm able to help people. But there are other people that may not. I have some people that don't even touch the body. And you have to be careful because each state has its own requirements and regulations. Florida, we can touch people in a safe way because we're massage therapists. Other states are supposed to. And sense. I know some people um, that are, are quite religious and they bring in a lot of the teachings of the Bible when they do colonics. So everybody is different. And what I invite people to do is just ask yourself, what do you want? Call a few people and ask questions. And if they don't answer it, just tell them, you know, I'm not quite clear on what you're saying. Keep asking questions because you deserve it for yourself. Right. So what are some of the common questions a person should ask to interview a colon hydrotherapist? Well, first of all, I would ask them if they're certified. And if so, by what governing body? Okay. Where did they get their training? Um, what techniques do they use? Ask them to walk you through. When I come to your office, what do you do from beginning to end? Do you use disposable tubes? So some people use a stainless steel still. Okay. Yeah, what kind of equipment? Mm -hmm. Ask them to complain. Because I, look, I'm gonna be very transparent here because there was a time in the organization that the open and closed system people were going like this all the time. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's preference. It is absolute preference. And so um, let me see what else I would ask. Go ask if you can come by and see them. If I have a new client, I ask them, would you like to come in and see my facility? Yeah. Because I have been in some facilities. Ah, uh, you want clean stuff. I use everything disposable except for my sheets. I have a sheet 
over them with their gowns that are cloth and they are taken to professional cleaners okay mm -hmm. um because sanitary and because we are um, inspected by the massage board here in Florida, and we have to have certain regulations. And of course, now with the virus, we take the temperature and we wipe everything down. And it's really funny because I share a space with somebody right now. Um, and, you know, they're telling me, well, don't forget this. And I looked at them and I said, we probably have the cleanest bath restroom in the whole place. It's nothing new to us. This is what we do typically. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And we clean after every client with our equipment. That's, yeah. Contamination. That's so, fascinating. Good. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Now, as we wrap up here, how can people reach you? Website, email? Okay. I'm sure there are probably other questions that I didn't think of or people didn't ask that I would love to have you available for a resource for people if you're interested. Sure, sure absolutely. Um, my website, um, it's Renew Life Wellness. That's R E. N E W Life L I F E Wellness W E L L N E S S dot com. Okay. If you want to reach me personally, then it's Suzanne S U Z A N N E at Renew Life Wellness dot com. Wonderful. Thank you. I really appreciate you coming on. We had a lot of viewers and <laughs> you know, this is, this is an important topic and we don't get it. It's not in general health information and you have such a broad experience base. You've seen a lot. And I know from the stories that you've told me, the types of all different types of people and conditions and backgrounds that you've helped. I know that more people need to be aware of this type of treatment to help just their overall wellness, how they feel, their mental state, everything. And you know, one thing I'd like to touch on really quick, um, because you know my, my twin brother, okay, he's a biological dentist. Um, and when I went to see him years ago to get my mercury out, I made him stop after each one he took out, rinsed my mouth out with Corella, you know, and then I found a colon therapist and I had a colonic and I asked them to put in wheatgrass because that, or Corella, because it pulls the mercury out. If you're getting dental work done, I encourage you to go to a biological dentist and ask them what their protocol is because there is a relationship between the gut and the mouth. Each one of our teeth correspond to the organs in our system. Yeah. So we have one lady who wants to know, do you actually drink coffee yourself? No, I don't like coffee. I think I've had cups in my life <laughs> okay but you don't see it as something detrimental to the colon or okay. i used to, at one point when i was younger i was so black and white you know what be happy because when you're happy you have endorphins mm -hmm. and being you know when you smile it's less muscles on a frown so sure. you know don't go moderation one cup of coffee fine it's okay. I prefer it up the bum. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great ending. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. I, I really want to thank you for having me. And I want to thank my brother who introduced us. And for you viewers out there, Amy is an incredible body worker. But also, if you see those pictures behind her, he's also a professional <laughs> photographer. And on July 19th, she actually has a solo exhibit. And I'm tooting her horn because I had the blessing to meet her in person, go to her place, and see her photographs. She's awesome. And what she captures in them is beautiful. So I want to invite everybody to come to your exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, yeah, so it's great now that it's virtual. It can be, you know, anyone can join all over the world. And so I have people all over and before when we we're just going to do it in Phoenix before the pandemic, I wasn't able to have everyone, but now anyone can join, which is great. So, yeah. So two weeks from today, 1 PM um, Pacific standard time. So yeah, but thank you. Fun. 
Yeah. And I have a complimentary colonic for you when you come see me in town. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I got to make my ticket and head that way. <laughs> I know I need it. <laughs> Anyways. Thank you very much again. And for all of you that joined us today, thank you so much for joining us. We will have another guest next weekend, but thanks for joining us. Please reach out to Suzanne. I can't tell you she's an amazing personality. I'm always smiling and laughing when I talk to her. I know you guys will too. So have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. We'll talk soon. Bye guys. Bye-bye.